Hi Venus, I'm back here with part two diagram based stuff of general surgery. So in this I'll be trying to cover as many clinical things as possible which I feel are very important and most of these clinical scenarios were already discussed in the respective videos as well as in our WhatsApp discussion board in different modes. So I'm just going to have a quick recap, which will be very, very useful for your examination. First is about the types of edges. Okay, uh, we have worked a lot for this. I mean, focusing more on examples, but even this question can be asked as a diagram based also. They can simply give the graphical representation of each type of edge and they can ask you the example. Okay, this one is sloping. Punched out, you can see this one. We have already had a case based discussion on punched out syphilis. Okay, and followed by undermined. Okay, the outermost will be protruded, whereas there will be undermined in the next layer, next below layer. Roll, you can see something like a rolls. Averted will come out. Okay, so these are the types of edges that you have to make a note. Graphical representation can be asked. The next comes is the part of the ulcer as already discussed edge different edges we have discussed base is not visible whereas floor is visible so base is always felt you will feel the base floor you will see the floor okay so make a note the difference between the floor and the base base is present below the floor base is felt whereas floor is seen Coming to some of the swellings of head and neck, okay. So, I mean, I have just uh, given the case, I mean, I'm not describing the case, any case here, but in most of the situations, apart from the uh, diagram based stuff, they are going to give some hints, okay, some clues and some investigations or some signs and symptoms related to each type of cyst so that they can give the graphical representation or the diagnosis part and they will ask you to identify it. Okay, so this is uh, the brachial cyst and this is the fistula. You can see an opening here and in most of the cases they will be present on the lateral surface of the neck. Okay, they will be present on the lateral side, not midline on the lateral sides. The next comes is thyroglossal cyst. The peculiar feature is more in most of the cases it will be present in the midline. You can see in the midline. The fistula is also in the midline. You can see in the midline. Apart from that, they can give you other signs and symptoms which are very peculiar for this, okay, which moves upon deglutition, which moves upon protrusion of tongue or any other signs and symptoms they can give by which you can diagnose this cyst or fistula. The next comes is the sublingual dermoid cyst, okay, and the ranula. Or in most of the scenarios, they look similar. But in ranula, you can see a bluish tinge, okay, you can see a bluish tinge and ranula is more flexible when compared to your dermoid cyst. Most of the location will be same because both of these cases will be in the sublingual area below the tongue. Okay, maybe small or big different in size. Uh, we don't bother but you can you can clearly see the texture of ranula on the diagram. For example, you can see here you can see a bluish tinge which is absent in the sublingual dermoid cyst. The next comes is already we had a beautiful case based discussion on this that is carotid body tumor which is present on the lateral side and uh, which is uh, this is the carotid body tumor which is at, present at the bifurcation. The next comes is we already have a very decent discussion over the stages. Stages are very very important. They can give a uh, sequence based question on the stages of uh, occurrence of uh, lymphadenitis in uh, tuberculosis of which cholestrude abscess is one okay so you can see a cholestrude abscess and all these graphical representation how it starts what is the cassation necrosis followed by cholestrude abscess and finally the opening of sinus in, uh, in the tuberculous lymphadenitis case the next goes is any any such question you can identify easily as a cervical rip they can they can they can point out few they can point out few uh, vascular symptoms and the neural symptoms along with this diagram so they can you can identify it as cervical rip 
so this is like this is again a most commonly asked area okay not a diagram but there is a descriptive question uh, based on this in 2000 28 okay so you need to learn so most of your salivary gland swellings your descriptions will go below the ear swellings which are on the lateral side but below the ear you can see a swelling below the ear lobe right so this is a bilateral salivary gland swelling okay so make a note that most of your salivary gland diagnosis okay i feel like people will get confused about the swellings of head and neck okay uh, and the salivary glands so salivary glands will be below the ear okay this is uh, once asked in one of the examinations so it's better you have make a note uh, that is Volkman scoop uh, which is useful used primarily for the collection of cancellous grafts from the bone okay and apart from this is used to remove the contents of abscess sinus and fistula also okay you can see the scoop it is something like a scoop and uh, similar to this, uh, you you can you can add one more thing that is gallstone scoop. One one gallstone scoop is there, uh, which looks like your curate, which looks like your curate, but uh, the working end will be the same. Okay, that is gallstone scoop. Okay, if the working end will be the same. That is used to remove the gall bladder stones by scooping it out. Okay, that's one. And apart from that, I hope you know that scooping technique, right? Scooping technique, which is again a neat 2020 question. What is scooping technique? Scooping technique is used for the placement of your needle. Okay, the placement of your needle. Once you're done with your uh, local anesthetic to prevent the trauma from the needle the needle has to be scooped and should be placed back into it its cap okay that is called a scooping technique which was asked in need 2020 just make a note okay this is a, this is related to oral surgery the next comes is this is asked several times in the aims okay this is okay laryngoscope okay and uh, and this is laryngoscope with a camera okay you can see what is inside okay laryngoscope with a camera don't get confused it's a bit advanced instrument laryngoscope with camera and laryngoscope and the next comes is uh, i mean uh, it is one of the mode it is one of the mode this is called as barium meal you're going to give some radio opaque substance to the patient and then followed by you will take x-rays to that other esophagus or any other area where you can identify any esophagus varices or Barrett's esophagus or anything can be identified. It's not uh, an ideal tool for diagnosis, but it is one of the investigation of choice for most of the diseases in the in the in your GIT tract from the esophagus pharynx and, and any other areas. Okay, that this 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 photograph this mode is called as barium meal or barium swallow. Okay, the next comes is okay. Most of you know that this is cherry blossom okay cherry blossom appearance on silography okay that is called as silography or silogram which is seen in the case of your jorgen syndrome uh, i was just uh, trying to cover as many things as possible okay just just have a quick recap this is how you have to learn the diagram so so you will you will uh, go for the right answer in a very limited time that is that is the most important in uh, in the diagram based stuff okay apart from going for the right answer you have to finish the things in a limited time with more confidence so that you can utilize this limited time what you have saved here to other questions which are too lengthy or too tricky this is how you need to balance your examination the easy questions has to be done with high accuracy with high speed so that you can give more time for the tricky questions and force your brain to come out with the right answer this is the logic that you have to follow for an exams like NEET 2020 which is too lengthy the paper is too lengthy uh, which has 100 plus uh, easy questions which can be uh, easily done in a limited time by identifying the keyword so the rest over 140 of which 100 are going to be easy but tricky but 40 are too tricky right so you need to finish the step one of these 100 questions which are known by keywords finish it fast then move to the 100 questions which are lengthy 
but you can go for the right answers then you can spend more of your time with the left over 40 but make a note you have to maintain high accuracy in the level 1 and level 2 questions okay so this you have to implement in every examination particularly in the grand examinations okay because uh, we we uh, we as a team we are planning to force you uh, to make a tough grand exam than your daily exams we are not we don't have any intention to make a tough daily exam daily exam should be easy according to me grand exams most of the grand exams or subject specific exams were made in such a way that they consume they they occupy the time for level one level two questions also okay so just uh, as you have an examination uh, once you're done with this video okay i hope you have to implement the same technique as already discussed in many other sessions that every exam you have to feel it as a final exam and every exam once you're done with the exam you have to come out with a post analysis of the exam where you went wrong where you feel tricky where where the time has been consumed okay so all these things has to be written down on a on a, on a white paper by writing the review of general surgery grand exam then this mistake should not be done when you are going with the same subject for the second round this is how you can improve on yourself okay so all the best guys okay do well do rock the exam and i want to see a bright awesome scores all the best thank you bye